Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 9.3. This is the final public release. It's been seven betas in the making, so there were seven developer and public betas that Apple made before releasing the, this to the public, so it should be pretty stable. So let's take a look at the version number. Here you'll see it's 9.3, that's 13E234. This is an iPhone 6S Plus, so that may vary a little bit for you depending on the build number, but it should basically be the same. Now the specific features to iPhone 6S Plus and 6S are actually 3D touch related. Uh, there's many other updates we'll go over in just a moment, but the one specific to these two devices has to do with 3D touch and quick settings. So under settings, just push a little bit harder and you get battery, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth settings. You can do that on just about any Apple app. So you've got these quick settings under just about everything that's Apple related, news included, so that's really nice as well. One of the other things they've done is bring Night Shift. This was a major feature they went over today at today's keynote where they announced a couple new products, but this feature allows the phone to take blue light out of the screen. It works on all the different devices, I believe, and what it does is it reduces blue light, which should help you sleep a little bit better. That setting can be found right here. You've got this little setting. We'll turn it on and it makes the screen appear a little bit more yellow, but it's pulling the blue tones out of the display to help you sleep a little bit better. Turn it back off and let me show you some of those settings as well. The features for Night Shift are under Display and Brightness under the settings. So you can see we have Sunset to Sunrise, and you can set it to be scheduled or just have it do it automatically or just be off altogether. But it's really nice, and it, it basically changes depending on the day and the, the tone of the room depending on the device you have as well. And that's really more specific to the new iPad Pro. It's a 9.7-inch iPad Pro. But it's really nice. Uh, it works pretty well, and it's, it's worked well in the betas and helped my eyes actually at night. They've made some changes to Apple News. Some updates to things such as top stories. We'll wait for it to load. Here's top stories. You can now read it in landscape mode. You can just scroll through like that. And pretty simple update, but they've got that in there as well. That's really nice. Another update they've done has to do with full screen video in podcasts and Apple Music. So if you're using Apple Music or podcasts on the iPad specifically, you'll be able to do this in full screen and watch your videos. So that'll be nice if you've not been able to do that. Under the Activity app, they've made some changes as well. There's a new Workouts tab here, and then you can change this around. And it's really nice they've added that. And they've added activity to the health dashboard as well. So that's another little update that's in there. Now, one thing that may be big to some people, not others, if you use the iBooks app on here or on your iPad and you add a PDF to it or any of your own eBooks, it'll actually sync, the, sync to iCloud and actually allow it to be synced across different devices. So if you have iBooks here, you have I, iBooks on an iPad, it'll sync those particular books across the different devices. So that's really nice and a much needed update for a lot of people. You can also pair multiple Apple Watches to your iPhone, so that's nice if you've got multiple Apple Watches. I'm not sure how many people will be doing that, but I guess if you have a steel one and you have an aluminum one and you want to use different ones, you could do that if you want to. Or if you share a device, you can do that as well. Siri is now available in multiple new languages, so now we have Malay from Malaysia, Finnish and Hebrew. You can speak in those languages and sh Siri should understand, so let me know how that goes in the comments below. Uh, also, we have new education options. So I can't actually show you this because I don't have much of this set up uh, in the way of education, but let me go into the iPad real quick. In the iPad, we have this new app called Classroom. Now, I don't have access to this, and you can see it says Classroom not configured. You actually have to uh, contact your network administrator for assistance, it says, but basically Classroom must be configured using an education configuration profile. So I would have to create one of those, then I could use all these new features that are integrated into Classroom. I can manage multiple iPads, I can have multiple users for multiple iPads, all based around this Classroom app, which is really nice and, and much, much needed in the iPad space. For those of you that use Apple Music, you can now add music to the playlist without adding them to your library. So in case you want to add a bunch of music to playlists, but you don't want it to show up in your giant list of music, that should be a nice little change. There's a bunch of little tweaks and fixes in Apple Music as well. Now, there's also some shortcuts on iPad, not specific to music at all, but shortcuts to iPad that allow for the keyboard or the smart keyboard to be used throughout the OS more fluidly. So before you could only use it here and there, hopefully it's throughout the whole OS. I haven't really tried it out yet, but 
before it was really only in certain parts, not everywhere. They've also improved CarPlay, and for those of you that have Apple CarPlay, um, it really, I guess, it makes some really significant changes, makes it work more fluidly, and it's a bunch of little bug fixes as well. Now, speaking of bug fixes, there are a huge amount of bug fixes. Uh, I'll try and link all of the fixes in, in the description below to some page with all of those fixes, but it's quite quite substantial, all the little fixes they've put in here to tweak everything, including not just bug fixes, but stability, enterprise fixes, and accessibility fixes as well. So they've really made this a pretty significant update, and it was almost two gigabytes to download. I think 1.7 gigabytes in order to download and then install this. So it was, it was a good size update. So hopefully that gives you a general idea of all the major changes in iOS 9.3. But if you've found anything I haven't mentioned that you think is pretty substantial and significant, let us know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.